Hello everybody. Okay, for the language arts today, um, we're focusing on two things. You are going to identify the simple subject and simple predicate in a sentence. Remember, there's two parts to a sentence. There's the subject and there's the predicate. But there's also a simple subject and a simple predicate. We'll talk about that a little more. So you'll identify the simple subject and the simple predicate. And by the end of this lesson, you will also, um, we're going to compare subjects and verbs to make them agree, to make them make sense together, okay? Um, so very first, I want us to look at this first sentence I have above my head. I wrote it in cursive. Some of you might be on small devices, so I'm gonna read it for you. It says, Jenna spent a quarter for some gum. Jenna spent a quarter for some gum. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to separate our subject from our predicate. So the two parts of the sentence, the subject and the predicate. Jenna spent a quarter for some gum. Where are you going to draw the line to separate the subject from the predicate? Between Jenna and spent. Remember the subject is the who or what um, is doing the thing in the sentence and then the predicate is the is the what is happening, what's the thing that's going on. Okay. How about in our second sentence? Our dogs splashed in the pond. Our dogs splashed in the pond. Or are you going to separate the subject from the predicate? Okay. Right here. Your complete subject is our dogs, and the complete predicate, the whole predicate, is splashed in the pond. Okay. Every sentence must have a verb in the predicate. In the predicate part, there must be a verb. What is the verb in our first sentence? What is the verb in our first sentence? Jenna spent a quarter for some gum. Subject, predicate. The verb is somewhere in the predicate part. What is the verb? Spent a quarter for some gum. Okay, spent, that is the verb. It's always easiest to find the verb first because then you can better identify what the subject is. Okay, so the verb here is spent. What is being done? You can spend something. Spent is something you can do, could have done. Okay. Always best to find the verb first. Now we can easily find the subject. So we ask ourselves, who or what, who or what spent? Who or what spent? So Jenna. Jenna is the subject of the sentence because she is who did the action spent. So we find the verb first because it helps us to find the subject. So then we ask ourselves, who spent? Jenna spent. Got it? Okay. Ooh, how about our second sentence? Our dog splashed in the pond. What is the verb? in the predicate part of our sentence. What is the verb in the predicate part of the sentence? Okay, splashed. Splashed is our verb. So after we identify the verb, that's gonna help us figure out what our subject is, the 
who or what. So who or what splashed. Okay, this is where we're talking about the, um, the difference between a complete and a whoop. The difference between the complete and the simple subject or the complete and the simple predicate. So when I ask you who or what splashed, I'm sure most of you would have said our dogs. But my question for you is, um, did our splash? Who or what did the splashing? Dogs, here yeah, this way, dogs splashed. Our talks about who the dogs belong to, but our is not something that can do an action. So it's not our splashed. The simple subject, the smaller part of the subject that tells specifically the who or what is just dogs. Dogs splashed. If this had said, my sister Jenna spent a quarter for some gum, the, com the whole, the, the complete subject is my sister Jenna. But the simple subject, if you were gonna make this sentence as small as possible, it would be Jenna spent. Subject, verb. That's what a sentence needs, a capital letter, punctuation, subject, and a verb. And it needs to make sense. Jenna spent. That could be a sentence. Just like dogs splashed could be a sentence. There's a verse in the Bible, the shortest verse in the Bible. I'm sure, golly, I'm just throwing things all over the place. The shortest verse in the Bible that I'm sure some of you already know is this. diagram or draw this picture or this sentence the same way we have already been. Separate the subject from the predicate. What is our verb? What's happening here? Wept. And who wept? Jesus wept. So it's this is a complete sentence. It's got a capital letter. It's got punctuation, it's got a subject, and it's got a predicate with a ver and a verb in that predicate. So when we're talking about simple subject, simple predicate, it's saying if, if we could make this sentence as small as possible, what is the easiest, the smallest, most simple subject, and the smallest verb or uh, predicate? So our dogs, is the complete subject. Splashed in the pond would be the entire part of the predicate, but the verb tells us what the simple predicate is. And the subject, the simple subject, is simply the smallest part of it. So, Jenna spent, dogs splashed, Jesus wept, okay? That's the difference between complete and simple. When we find the subject, we are looking um, only for the noun that did the action. Our is not a noun. Our is not a noun. So let's read that again. When we find the subject, we are looking only for the noun that did the action. So we underline only the word dogs in this sentence here. If the sentence uh, said our six black Labrador dogs splashed in the pond. If this sentence said our six black dog, if it said our six black Labrador dogs splashed in the pond, we still would only underline dogs. Six black Labrador describes the dogs and it's not a noun. We're looking for the simplest noun in the sentence, okay? Even if it said our six black Labrador dogs splashed in the pond, we would still only underline the word dogs. Okay. Um, in, yep, and then I wanna take a look at 
I'm going to erase that so there's less for you to see and less to confuse you. Okay, so that was the first part. That was identifying the simple subject and the simple predicate of a sentence. Okay, the next part is comparing subject verbs to make them agree, to make them make sense. Okay, we call this subject and verb agreement. If people agree, they get along. They decide on something that makes sense. If a sub this is something that I know that we have talked about in our DOL when it comes to um, making those corrections, okay? So I have um, Bella, children, Elijah, and boys here with different um, verbs along with them. If a subject is singular, we often add S or ES to the end of the present tense verb if the subject is singular. So this first sentence here says Bella something. Here I'll add periods at the end because these would be the end of the sentences, okay? So just so that you have a visual, these are the simple subjects and simple predicates. This is where we are splitting up our sentences, okay? Obviously, Bella here is our simple subject. We're going to find which predicate, which simple predicate, which verb agrees with Bella. The word Bella being a singular noun. Is Bella singular or plural? Well, I just told you, huh? It's singular, so if the subject is singular, we often add S or ES to the end of the verb. Our verb here is either sing or sings. So which makes more sense? Bella sing or Bella sings? This is not an imperative sentence. We are not telling Bella what to do. We're just simply stating something that Bella is doing. So Bella what? Bella sing or Bella sings? Your answer would be sings. Bella sings. So that I could circle it either way so you could notice. Okay. Look at our second subject here, children something. So our subject is children. Our predicate, our simple predicate is either sing or sings. What do you think? Is children singular or plural? Okay, children is plural, and when the subject is plural, we do not need to add S or ES to the verb. So, in that case, if we don't need to add S or ES, then obviously it's going to be children sing. Bella sings, children sing. Um, I don't know if these notes will help, but if it's, nope, that's not at all what I meant to write. If the subject is singular, your subject is your noun, if your subject is singular, then you add S or you add ES to the verb. When the subject is singular, you add S or ES to your verb. Okay, so take a look at these next two then. If Bella sings 
and children sing. What does Elijah do? Elijah help. Elijah helps. Okay. Elijah helps. We add this S because it is singular. Our subject is singular. I just want to make this a little less visually confusing for some of you. Okay. Boys help. Boys helps. Is boys singular or plural? Okay, the S at the end tells you that this noun is plural. So boys help, boys helps. This should actually be a capital B, I suppose, if it's the beginning of our sentence. Okay, boys help. A plural subject means you do not add the S like you do when it's singular. So, singular adds an S or ES depending on what verb you're using, okay? We're going to jump now into your language book. You're going to turn to page 89 in your language book. Page 89 in your language book. Okay. Me. Page 89 says at the top, look closely. A verb, remember the verb tells you what to do. It tells you what's happening. A verb that ends in S or ES tells what one person or thing does. If there's an S or an ES, it's talking about what one person or one thing is doing. Okay? Um, do not add S or ES to the verb if this sentence tells about more than one. So for example, they give you one boy helps, two boys help. The child sings, the children sing. Okay, think A, mark the circle next to the sentence with the correct verb. Number one, Take a look, it goes all the way across. Okay, you have Annie study her spelling words or Annie studies her spelling words. Which one is correct? Annie study her spelling words or Annie studies her spelling words? You need to fill in the circle for which one shows the correct form of your verb. Okay, now the look closely down at the bottom. Find the verb and then ask who blank or what blank, who or what is doing it. So find the verb first. Find the verb first. This is important. This is how I would like you to be doing this. I can't be there with you to make sure you're doing it this way. So I know it may not make sense because the predicate is on the other side of the sentence and we want to try to do like left to right kind of like how we read and do things but I do want you to try and find that verb first it's going to make it a lot easier for you to find the subject in the um the subject okay trust me okay find the verb then ask who or what the answer to this question is the subject of the sentence so early in the morning mom reads her bible the verb is reads. So ask yourself, who reads? And the answer is mom. Mom is the subject of this sentence. Okay, so finding the verb helps you figure out what the subject is. Okay, 
So your directions, it shows you that you have three directions. 